I'm uh, doing this video, it's something I've wanted to do a long time, to try to at least give you a knowledge of what's going to be happening during surgery uh, to your loved one or your child. It's a very anxiety provoking uh, experience to have surgery on your child and uh, the process, knowing a little bit of what the process is going to be, I'm, I'm hoping will, will help uh, that process and, and, and your understanding of how we do this. Uh, we do most of my surgery here at the uh, surgery center and so this is where we're filming and what you're going to be seeing is the steps that go through uh, uh, the different uh, procedures, different processes to uh, have the procedure done. The first step is to come here where we are, where I'm speaking right now, to be registered and there's a registration process and they'll call you beforehand, tell you when to be here at the, the surgery center at the morning of surgery. We go from there to the pre-op area where uh, that's where the nurses take over. Vital signs will be taken and uh, he or she will be placed to a gown. And at that time, uh, some questions will be asked to make sure that still you haven't eaten or drink, uh, had anything to drink past midnight and make sure there's no uh, problems with his uh, medical or with, uh, with your child's medical um, history uh, that may, uh, may give us problems during surgery. You'll also meet the anesthesiologist there. They'll answer any questions that you may have uh, concerning anesthesia. I know that's a very uh, humongous uh, uh, concern, and you'll, you'll notice that our anesthesiologists are the best in the business. Uh, at the time when, after all these questions have been answered and everything is in place, a uh, couple of important points to note. There will be no shots, there's no blood drawn, there's no finger sticks, we don't start IVs. Uh, until after they're asleep. Now there is some, there are some uh, 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 exceptions. One exception is, is if they're over 100 pounds or 10 years of age and older. That's a fairly firm rule, but sometimes these are broken. But most of all, most, most likely the, the IV will be started uh, in the uh, operating room when, when your child's asleep. Uh, to get him ready and not be uh, anxious, we do a uh, medicine called Versed, so he'll get it liquid, won't get a shot with it, and he'll drink this and he'll get fairly sleepy. Um, I think around here they call it the loose juice or the crazy juice. He may start acting a little silly, um, but that's fine. Uh, we do that so that he's not anxious. There's a point where the pre-op nurse uh, will then hand over the care of your child uh, to the circulator. The circulator is the head nurse in the back in my operating room. Uh, she'll come to get the child, get your child, she'll ask some questions, and then she'll take him or her through uh, to the operating room, and then there will be a little separation. There comes the anxious moment, uh, but your child will be uh, quickly rejoined with you uh, in recovery after, uh, after the procedure's been done. That all depends how long that, uh, that time is. If it's PE tubes, it's less than five minutes. If it's PE tubes and adenoids, it's generally around 10 minutes. Tonsillectomies and adenoidectomies take around 15 minutes. And if we do some sort of nasal surgery, that can take anywhere from uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So there's not a lot of time that you'll be away from your child. Now, in the operating room, what you can't see is that we're giving the child some gas. We do it with mask and we've learned to talk about blowing up a balloon and there's a little procedure that we go through and the anesthetist and the anesthesiologist are there as this happens. Um, the child will then go to sleep and that's when we start the IV. Um, IV is started, wrapped, and the IV usually stays in place until they're drinking and swallowing and doing well. Usually that's just a little bit before we let y'all go home. Um, and after that, then the procedure takes place. Uh, obviously I'm the guy that's gonna be doing that. And then we wake him up, wake the child up, and once the child's awake, we go to recovery. And that's when I will meet you all, the parents I will meet in the uh, little step-down recovery in a private room. Uh, in the private room, I'll tell you all the specifics of the procedure, I'll tell you how it went, 
uh, and then very soon afterward, the, the, uh, the, your child will be joining us in that room. There is a little time where they wake up uh, a little disoriented. There's almost no way around it. It's just a stage of anesthesia. Uh, it lasts anywhere from 10 minutes to 15 minutes. Uh, it's, it's something we, we do, they just have to go through. It's not pain. Um, and once we get through that, then the child will be more himself. We give them medicine for the pain if there is involved with the procedure and uh, get them to drink, get them to swallow, make sure they're not nauseated. And uh, there you're with the, uh, with the recovery room nurse. Uh, at that time, once they're, they're re, uh, recovered, uh, anywhere from an hour to two hours, we'll let you go home. Uh, we take you to a, uh, an area where we ask for the car to be brought around and then we uh, deliver the child to the vehicle and off you go. That night uh, or that afternoon, my office calls to check on the child, to ask to make sure there's no question. Uh, the next morning, uh, either I call or and or the surgery center also calls to make sure. So we're checking on your child soon afterwards and even the next night and the next day to make sure that everything went well. So it's, as you can see, it's all designed to uh, deliver the child safely and soundly back home uh, with as least amount of anxiety and stress um, as can be done. So that's, I'm hoping this video will help in that, uh, in that process.